ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! Ooh, it's time for another card reveal. <laughs> Hello once again, UWA Elite fans. This is the Man of a Thousand Spreadsheets, MC Hale, and I am here with another card reveal. We're talking about Gold Rush. It is happening this Saturday, May 20th. Doors open at 6 p.m. Bell time is at 6.30. We are at the UWA Elite Army Base in South River, New Jersey, at the South River VFW. You can get your tickets at uwaelite.com right now so you don't miss out on any of the action. Now, this is Gold Rush, which means not only are every single championship belt in UWA Elite up for grabs on the line during this event, but even the non-title matches definitely have that, that big match, that championship feel. You ready for the rundown? Here we go. So we are going to start things off with what might be the most anticipated matchup of the season so far. Two wrestlers with extremely loyal, dedicated fan bases. I'm talking about Flash Carter. I'm talking about Joey Adams. Now these two wrestlers have been circling each other for nine, ten months now, since the semifinals of the Dynamite Davis Memorial Tournament. And since then there have been interrupted matches. There have been triple threats. They we even saw the two of them on the same tag team at Mega Fight just a few weeks ago. But now, one-on-one, -on -one, we finally get to see the two of them face off in the ring for the title. And as a bit of a reward for the patience of the fans, and as a nod to Adams and Carter, both espousing the May the Best Man Win sentiment. We saw that when they were speaking to Shannon May after Mega Fight a few weeks ago. As a nod to all of that, Dave Swan, president of UWA, has declared that not only are they going to be facing off for the I Championship, but we need a definitive winner. It is not going to be just one match. And so at Gold Rush, the man that you voted as having the finisher of the year, the No Leaf Clover, the anti-hero, Joey Adams, is going to put up his I Championship belt against the two-time defending most popular wrestler in UWA Elite, Flash Carter. It's for the I Championship. It is two out of three falls, and you are going to see it at Gold Rush. Moving up the ladder to the big belt, the UWA Elite Championship, currently held by BT Bull, and it is the largest jewel in the crown of Nicholas K. Associates. Now, despite what BT Bull expressed at the end of Mega Fight to Shannon May, that he did it all on his own because Nicholas K. wasn't there, well, we know that Ty Thomas tried to hit Vertigo with the Golden Ticket briefcase, we know that KTB's music played, further distracting Vertigo, and we know that BT Bull had a handful of Matt Vertigo's tights to hold on to the pinfall and to hold on to the UWA Elite Championship belt. But if there is one man who can overcome the odds that Nicholas K. Associates brings into the ring, it might just be the most diligent man in professional wrestling, Corey Dillinger. Now Dillinger is the man that BT Bull took that belt away from, but something you have to keep in mind about Dillinger. He won the Dynamite Davis Memorial Tournament, pitting BT Bull as a matter of fact. So taking out 23 other competitors. He won the brawl for it all against 29 other competitors. And he earned this title shot by beating five other competitors in the cell block six match. It seems like when the odds are stacked against him, D1 since day one levels the playing field. So BT Bull is going to be bringing Nicholas K. He's gonna be bringing Ty Thomas, but Corey Dillinger is going to have his eyes wide open for this one. At Gold Rush, it is going to be the UWA Elite Champion, BT Bull, defending against Corey Dillinger. Speaking of former UWA Elite Champions, let's talk a little bit more about Matt Vertigo, the New York Drip. Vertigo has been harassed by KTB since June of last year, since living on the edge, when that bag of animal bones showed up in the ring, followed very quickly by an attack by the King of the Barons. Since then, there have been injuries, interferences, run-ins, uh, there was a match of the year candidate at crossroads between the two of them. We saw a double countout at setting the standard this year that ended up with Dave Swan getting, getting punched in the face and suspending both Vertigo and KTB. And as I mentioned just a few minutes ago, when Matt Vertigo was trying to take the UWA Elite Championship, KTB's music played, distracting him and costing him the match. Well, we're not 100% sure of whether that music was played by KTB or whether it was someone involved with Nicholas K. Associates, but in a conversation with Shannon May, 
Matt Vertigo, the New York Drip, did not mince words in who he thought was responsible for that distraction. He said he's sick of KTB interfering in his matches, in his life. He thought he was done with KTB after the suspension and is now demanding a match with KTB, saying he doesn't care what is on the line. It can be any match that KTB wants. What kind of a match would the King of the Barons ask for? What would appeal to a beast? At Gold Rush, you are going to see Matt Vertigo against KTB. This match could end inside the ring. This match could end outside the ring. This match could end outside the building. At Gold Rush, falls count anywhere and no disqualifications. Well, this is Gold Rush, and that means every single title is on the line, including the one that was unfortunately relinquished by Lucas Finnegan at Mega Fight and later won in fairly convincing fashion by Sean Damage McNellis, and I'm talking about the Iron Man Championship. Now, after the event was over, after Mega Fight had ended, Shannon May caught up with Damage backstage, and Damage came just short of apologizing for his actions over the past year. If you recall, in chasing the Iron Man Championship belt, he actually stole the physical belt and claimed that due to the law of possession, because he had the belt, he was the Iron Man champion. Well, in that interview with Shannon May, he did declare that this was his first title since 2016, admitting that last year he acted somewhat less than honorably. He's looking to bring honor back to the Iron Man championship. But Sean Damage McNellis has had a rough go of it this year. He's not on a winning streak. He's not even on a win streak. At setting the standard, Ty Thomas and King Tech were the last two men standing in the Golden Ticket ladder match. At Dangerous Uprisings, Damage was the first man pinned in the Cell Block 6 match. And that adds another little wrinkle, because the man who pinned him in that Cell Block 6 match is the hunter, Robbie Roller. Now, Roller has set his sights on thinning the herd, on, on what he sees as the weaker members of the UWA Elite roster, strengthening the herd by picking off its weakest members. Well, at the end of that match, it looked like Robbie Roller, through the FAFO, had that match won, is going to be, was going to be your new Iron Man champion. However, Damage threw him into the ring post, threw him out of the ring, kind of stole that pin. And if looks could kill, Robbie Roller staring daggers through Sean Damage McNellis. During that interview that I alluded to before, Roller came backstage with a chain in his hand and proceeded to beat and choke Damage, demanding a matchup. He didn't even care if the title was on the line or not, until Damage was forced to agree to the match or risk serious permanent injury. And so we are going to see it at Gold Rush. Sean Damage McNellis, apparently a man of his word putting his new Iron Man championship belt on the line. Damage against Roller. It's going to happen at Gold Rush. Okay, I've put it off long enough. We need to talk about the man that Lucas Finnegan won that Iron Man championship away from. He was then known as truly terrific. He then became good as gold, the insurance policy, the new professional professional wrestler, and if you've forgotten any of those nicknames, don't worry. He's going to come up with another five or six before next month. I'm talking about Ty Thomas. Now, we've already seen Thomas use that golden ticket briefcase to win or interfere in multiple matches. And he only won it in March. But one thing we haven't heard or seen from Ty Thomas yet is a plan on what he's going to do as far as cashing in that briefcase, challenging for a UWA Elite Championship belt. Well, if Ty Thomas is to be believed, then at Gold Rush, Ty Thomas is going to make a huge announcement. He is going to tell us what his plans are for the future of the Golden Ticket briefcase. It's happening this Saturday at Gold Rush. But Ty's night will not be over after that announcement. No, no. You see, in a bit of news that I am able to bring to you the UWA Elite Army before it hits our social media outlets, the return of an injured wrestler six weeks after being put on the shelf by nearly having his knee flattened by Ty Thomas at Dangerous Uprisings. The Fighting King, King Tech, the leader of the UWA Elite Army, is going to be joined by Queen Heather at ringside at Gold Rush to take on Ty Thomas in a grudge match. 
this is one there there's no gold on the line there is no title to be won or defended at this matchup this is just some good old-fashioned hatred this is some good old-fashioned revenge now can king tech overcome the odds that nicholas k associates brings to the ring will ty thomas continue that streak of using the golden ticket briefcase to ensure victories I can't wait to see this one. I hope you're going to be there too. We are going to see a grudge match. Ty Thomas, King Tech at Gold Rush. As the Nicholas K. Associates and the Fighting King and Queen will all attest to, it is really nice to have somebody at ringside to watch your back during your matches. And if there's a title on the line, even more so. That seems to be the source of confidence for the Just Us League, Chris Steeler and Anthony Michael, the UWA Elite Tag Team Champions. They absolutely watch each other's backs. They have brought in new tag teams into the UWA Elite, the Slime Balls, the Lost Boys, either to toy with themselves or to sick onto CMD, Boom Harden and Deshaun Pratt. And that confidence of the Justice League was flying especially high after Mega Fight in their interview with Shannon May. The Justice League issued an open challenge. Any tag team in the UWA Elite who would like to try and take those tag team championship belts away from the Justice League was welcome to try at Gold Rush. Well, before the sun even set at Mega Fight, the makeshift tag team of Explosive Eddie Thomas and Jay the Key Evans, fresh off of their match against Joey Adams and Flash Carter, found themselves without a match at Gold Rush and immediately accepted that challenge. If anyone can match the underhanded tactics of the Justice League, Thomas and Evans are really, really high up on that list. So at Gold Rush, the Justice League for the UWA Elite Tag Team Championships against Explosive Eddie Thomas and Jay the Key Evans. And, that's right, this matchup reveal is not done yet. And I have to let you know that when they issued that open challenge, the Justice League didn't specify that it was open to one tag team only. That's right, the team of Junie Underwood and Ethan Promise, the Lost Boys, who were one handful of tights away from possibly taking those tag team title belts away from the Justice League, are going to get another shot at the gold. This is going to be a triple threat tag team championship matchup. The Justice League, the Lost Boys, Thomas and Evans, and it is happening at Gold Rush. So those are all of the championship matches. However, this card rundown is not over yet. You see, what would a pirate-themed event be without a little bit of buried treasure? I am happy to bring to you in another exclusive the announcement of the very first UWA Elite Treasure Chest Turmoil match. It's happening at Gold Rush. What is on the line in the Treasure Chest Turmoil match? I have no idea. As a matter of fact, the six participants in this match have no idea either. All we know for sure is that there will be a physical treasure chest present at Gold Rush. But we're not sure what the rules of the match are. Is this match, is, is this treasure chest going to be uh, presented to the winner? Is it going to be suspended over the ring, ladder match style? Is it going to be hidden amongst the crowd? Is it going to be in the middle of the ring and there's just a mad rush for it? Again, we don't know. As, as of this taping, we don't know the rules. We don't even know what the prize is. However, there are six wrestlers who are all going to be vying for whatever is in that chest. Those six wrestlers are TJ Blade, Bulldog Pittman, The Matt Mechanic, Eric Corvus, Jungle Jim Wilder, Troy Locke, Hollywood Stuntman, Chris Powers, with the contents of that treasure chest being a complete mystery, we don't know if it's going to be a title shot, if it's going to be a pick your opponent, it might just be some pirate's booty. We have no idea. It's going to be very interesting to see how the six participants in this match approach it. Will alliances form? Will there be double crosses? Is this just going to be a free-for-all? On every card, on every event, there's one match that I'm really looking forward to, that I'm saying that's the one that I really want to call, and this one is it for Gold Rush. It is the UWA Elite's very first treasure chest turmoil match. And so that is the card rundown for Gold Rush. It, I was really rude, I apologize. 
It is coming your way this Saturday, May the 20th. Doors open at 6 p.m. Bell time is at 6.30. We are at the UWA Elite Army Base in South River, New Jersey at the South River VFW. Get your tickets at uwaelite.com. Join the network while you are there. Only $6.99 a month, and your first week is free for new subscribers. Follow us on all the social media at UWA Elite. I hope to see you this Saturday at Gold Rush. Until then, this is the man of a thousand spreadsheets, MC Hale, saying I will see you at ringside.